Alright, time for another tutorial. This particular one is how you will um, export your data, uh, specifically your tonometer values, um, into MATLAB, or at least save a specific file in a MATLAB format so that I can, and you can, do the pulse contour analysis using MATLAB. So the first thing we need to do is find some, some data on the tonometer signal. Oh, that looks like some there. So remember, uh, double-clicking on the side here allows you to res um, resize the signal. This particular signal looks like a pretty good um, radial waveform. So to save this in a MATLAB format, you actually select the um, section you want to actually save. It doesn't matter if you highlight the whole thing, um, just even just highlighting it like this will ensure that you save all the information on that particular channel. So to save as uh, a MATLAB file, you want to fi go to File, uh, Save Selection. This is your selection. Or um, On the little Mac, it might be a little bit harder to find, but there is a pull-down menu down here. And if you scroll down in the pull-down menu, there will be a, lab data, a MATLAB data format. Once you select that and you pick uh, a good uh, name, You can then hit save. And what this does is allow you to save the information for a mat, uh, in a MATLAB format for whichever channels you want. In this particular case, the only channel we need is four. You can save calculated data, replacing the underlying data, which is fine. And once you click OK, it's now in the format that we need. And in particular, this one, I think I saved it to the desktop. There's the actual program, sorry, the MATLAB file. If we open up MATLAB. We can then open that file and get all the information we need from it. So it takes a little while to open MATLAB, unfortunately. The other thing you should actually go and do is actually comment on all these particular uh, waveforms. If you're not sure what it is, at least tell yourself that it is a specific waveform. Um, and in all likelihood, it'll be a radial waveform if it looks really good. If it looks really bad, it's probably not radial. Uh, just add that to the comment list by giving uh, setup commands, add comment, in this particular case, radial tonometer. Tonometer. That'll add the comment in there so that if you have to go back to this file, you can just find the radial tonometer by selecting it from this comments window. So when we're in MATLAB, simple, um, we pick the directory that we want to find the data in. In this particular case, I saved it to the desktop, and it's down here called Tada. If you double click on this, it imports it right into the program. The program that we're going to run is called SPP2 uh, algorithm. You make sure you match this with the name of the file. Our sampling rate was 20,000 hertz. Once I hit enter, it will ask me for two things. One, the diastolic blood pressure when we took that particular measure. So you'll have to go back into your data. I'm just going to assume it was about 70 in this particular case. Enter that information in and diastolic, uh, systolic blood pressure you'll also have to write down and have ready when you're doing this analysis. And that means if you're doing this analysis with me, make sure you bring all your notes and you have a good idea of which blood pressure goes with which particular measure. If it doesn't go exactly, at least we have a good idea of what to calibrate this uh, measure to. So once we run that, the computer will go through and find various parts of the waveform. This being the second systolic peak. This being the dichrotic notch, or when the aortic valve has shut. So you get a change in pressure and a reduction in pressure there. And this was the peak in the systolics um, measure. Uh, this will be set up so that it will add this to a, a, an Excel file that you can then access. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to run that whole program one more time, and I'm just going to freeze it um, at a time point when I can get the information out of it. So once I run that one more time, all the information will appear in my workspace. Say 70 again, 110. Uh, there'll be one particular variable called results. 
here it is here. I double click on that. And I highlight these cells. I can add them to a template. Let's bring it up. Something like this. With all the titles and the particular subject in this, uh, this row here. And if I paste that in here, this gives me all the values for particular subject Y2 and the radial artery. So her systolic blood pressure in the radial artery was 112.9, mean arterial pressure of 83.3, a diastolic blood pressure of uh, 69.9, which is pretty close to 70, um, a second systolic peak of 89.9, heart rate of 50, an average heart our, our interval or time between your two our QRS complexes of 1.2, which is kind of the inverse of your heart rate. A reflection time, so time um, until we saw this particular spike of 27.57 milliseconds. An area under the systolic portion, so if we go back to our MATLAB um, images here, that would be the area from an imaginary line drawn right here under this particular part of the curve. And the other area, diastolic area, is this particular area under the curve. So that's systolic area, diastolic area, a ratio of the two. So this is 78.99 divided by 93.02 multiplied by 100. And the augmentation index, which is uh, basically the size of this pulse compared to this particular pulse. So from the bottom of this, well actually from here all the way up has a ratio of this one. And this, this information um, you can always look up in the uh, on Mendeley in the particular paper by O'Rourke who has all the guidelines and all the calculations in it for all these parameters. So if you're ever lost just go back into there or just check out um, McDonald's blood flow, which is written by O'Rourke and his colleagues. So once you have all these measures um, for all your participants, you can do some comparisons. So that's it for this particular tutorial. Um, and that will pretty much get you set on analyzing that uh, pulse contour stuff, and at least ready for me to help you analyze that. So that's it for that.